Yes, my dear friends. We are seeing the first part of the spider and the fly by Mary Bottom. We saw how the spider is trying to attract the fly into his cobweb, into the danger. We saw what lesson he wanted to tell us through a story. Bottom is trying to tell us, convey the message that what all glitters are not gold. We need to recognize those traps kept for us on the way. Maybe in the form of kind, material, in the kind of food and in the kind of uh, flat rewards. And the initial stanzas, we saw how the sp spider is attracting the fly by using various methods into his parlor. Tried all means, now he takes the biggest weapon, that is flattery. But still, the fly recognizing that it's a trap and he is getting away, trying to get away from him and keeping. But see, he loves to keep in touch with him. In his last line, he says, I will call another day and come back to you again some other day, not now. So we go on to the lesson. The spider turned him round and went into his den. The spider turned him round and went into his den. For well, he knew the silly fly would soon be back again. He said, you are no so nice, so witty, so brilliant, so beautiful. Your, your wings are so beautiful. And how come so dear to you? How come you don't come to my flattery? So he waved a subtle web in a little corner slide and set his table ready to turn upon the fly. Then he came out of his door again and merrily did sing. Come hither, hither, pretty fly with a pearl and silver wing. Your ro robes are green and purple, that's crest upon your head. Your eyes are like a diamond bright. Mine are dull as lead. So, the, f the fly sang, come hither, hither. Come on, merrily did sing. Your robes are green and purple. Here comes the fly knew the flat tree can lead this fly into his den. There's a crest upon your head. It's a nice crown. Your eyes are like a diamond bright. Mine, you see, just mine is so dull, so not rather nice. Alas, alas, how soon, how very soon this silly little fly, hearing his willy flattened words, came slowly flitting by. Want to know what is there again or? After all, he is my best friend. With the buzzing wings, she sang aloft. The near and nearer drew, thinking only of her, of her brilliant eyes and green and purple hue, thinking only of her crusted head, poor foolish thing. At last, up jumped the cunning spider and fiercely held her fest. He dragged her up with wings stare into a dismal den. Within within his little parlor, but she never came out again. Yes, my dear friends, the flat tree succeeds. The fly was successful in convincing the fly into its den. The words of flat words. And you know what fat it is. This story is known to all of us. What is the moral now? And now, dear little children who made this story read, to idle, silly, flattering words, I pray you never give heed. It's not give, listen to those people who are flatters, flattering us. Let's not listen to those people who are not, do not wish our good. Let's not keep the company of those bad people. 
they have got hidden agendas they have got uh, hidden motives unto an evil counselor clo close heart and ear and eye and take a lesson from this tale of a spider and the fly this is the world we saw some summarily said this is what we have seen in and around us how the world is world is very beautiful the people around is not that beautiful we must recognize those good friends and we must never heed to this kind foolish advices and we must keep away those bad company of people just not listen to these people at any time keep away the bad company if at all we encounter this bad company it is very nice at a, even a fraction of second they stay they staying there it can invite danger move away abide to the teachings and learnings of the teachers and our parents so this chapter teaches us be vigilant as not to fall prey to flattery thank you and god bless you so kindly read this poem well and uh, at, at least five long questions and write down five short questions thank you